And for number 10, we have that Tommaso and Pietro each have been given 1,500 euro to save for college. They tell us that Pietro invests his money in an account that pays nominal annual interest rate of 2.75%, compounded half yearly. See? Calculate the amount Pietro will have in his account after five years. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. So, whenever you see a problem like this and you highlight the same buzzwords that I did, you're going to realize that you are dealing with a compound interest problem. The biggest hint is that it literally says compounded half yearly in this case. See? So whenever, whenever, whenever you face one of a problem that is like this, you're going to pick up your formula booklet, go to compound interest, which is right there. Um, I spelled that wrong. Compound interest. And you're going to run into this formula here. See? And so just so you know, this is where I'm getting it from. It is in your formula booklet. You do not have to memorize it. This formula is asking for five different things. It is asking for FV, future value, PV, present value, and R, which is going to be your actual interest rate, like the percent, K, which is the amount of periods per year. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And N, which is the amount of years. See? And so you will always have four out of five. Vale? That means you can solve the equation, see? And so in this case, they are asking us in part A to calculate the amount Pietro will have in his account after five years. So if it's after five years, we're talking about an amount that's going to come later. That means that our future value is exactly what we're trying to find. So FV is going to be X. It is going to be our um, whatever variable thing we're trying to find, see? Present value, how much money he puts in the beginning. They were given 1,500 euros, see? R is going to be in percent. It's already in percent. They tell us that it's 2.75. We just leave it like that. See? All right. Cool beans. K. K is the weirdest one. I'll talk about it in a second. Let's first go with N. N we said was the amount of years. They tell us that it's after five years. So N is going to be five. See? K is the weirdest one. K is the amount of periods per year. What the hell do I mean by this? Some interest rates work monthly. And so monthly, like, it, money gets added onto your account, ¿cierto? Um, and in that case, if it's monthly, K would be 12, ¿sí? And so I'm going to start explaining it through that. If it's monthly, K is going to be 12. If it's yearly, K is going to be 1, ¿sí? If it's every three months, that means if it's every three months, that I have four periods, ¿sí? Interesting. So if it's every three months, I would put a four here. Dale. If in the problem, ¿cierto? now we are going to go to the problem. If they tell us that it's half yearly, that means that every half a year, I get like a period. ¿cierto? And so how many halves to make a whole? Two of them. ¿cierto? And so twice during the year, I get money, money, money. See? And so that is like the setup for part A. If I plug everything into um you know the formula right we're gonna have that fv equals 1500 times one plus 2.75 divided by two times 100 close parentheses exponent two times five and so i plug everything into my calculator fv is going to be just about 17 19.49 I'm not done yet for part A. What am I missing? Uh -huh. I am missing my units. So it's 1,719.49 euros. See? Units is part of the mark scheme. Um, a good way to remember is that if it's worth three points, one point is probably the units. See? So careful with that. Anyways, that's part A. See? For part B, we have that Tommaso wants to invest his money in an account such that his investment will increase to 1.5 times the initial amount in five years. Assume the account pays a nominal annual interest rate of R% percent compounded quarterly. Ooh la la, quarterly. So now it got a little bit more interesting. See? So again, we do have to look at the five things and see which one we're, mi we're missing. See? Um... Uh, well, actually, for part A, they tell us to determine the value of R. See, so R is going to be the one that we're missing. All right. So we're going to do the same, same exact process. We're going to need to find FV, PV, R, K, and N. R is what we don't have. R is going to be our X. See? Our present value is still going to be the same. We are still have the same amount of 1,500 
uh, money to start with. Um, N is still going to be five years. See? K, they tell us it is compounded quarterly. See? So if it's by quarters, it is going to be how many quarters? Four. See? And for the FV, they tell us that they want that his investment to increase 1.5 times the initial amount. See? So I take 1,500 for the FV, cierto? multiply by 1.5, and that's going to be my FV. See? If I go ahead and do that, I get 2,250. See? So what I did just now was apply what they told us here, the thing of 1.5 times the initial amount. See? So 1.5 times the initial amount is literally what I put in red here. See? 1.5 times the initial amount, initial amount 1,500. Anyways, that is the current scenario. If I plug everything into the formula, it's going to look a little bit like this. We will have blah, blah, blah. FV was 2000, blah, blah, blah. PV was this. 1 plus X, because we don't know what R is. It's. Give me one second. 4 times 100. Exponent 4 times 5. And so this is how we have it set up. See? Now, a lot of people, when they reach this scenario, they're like, how the hell do I get X alone? That is the biggest challenge right now, getting X alone. See? And this is something that shows up a lot, a lot, a lot in compound interest problems. For part A, everyone's happy because one of the variables is like easy to get a loan, cierto? usually your future value. But when it's not your future value, it's a little bit of a challenge to figure out what to do. So I actually have a video on this for using Calc Intersect, but the point is you don't have to get it alone. All you can do is call this Y1, call this Y2, do Calc Intersect, and wherever they intersect is what makes this whole thing true, ¿cierto? which is your X value that makes these two things equal each other. Now I know this probably sounds a little weird. You can watch my video and it has a lot more uh, in depth to it, but essentially Y1 is gonna be this, y2 is going to be that see so when i do calc intersect i'm going to find the x value that makes all of this true and it will be my answer again in the other video i talk a lot about like why this makes sense but the quick intuition you already heard it see so now the annoying part that comes through is actually making the window work see because a lot of times you graph it and your window just doesn't show it. See? Uh, something that sometimes works, not always, is going to zoom. Zoom zero, zoom fit. This sometimes works, not always. Let's see if it works. All we need is for the two lines to intersect so that we can actually do calc intersect. Zoom fit seems to have worked, ladies and gentlemen. And so if here I go to second trace, hit that cock button, go to intersect, I pick my first curve, which is up here, second curve, which is down there, which is really first line, second line, and guess, I guess near the point of intersect that I want to discover, which is only that one, I get this, ¿cierto? And so I get the set of points, 8.19206, comma 2250 see and so how do you interpret this well your y value cierto is the same as this guy here see and so your x value is going to be this guy here Dale. the point is if you set it up like this that this is my first line this is my second line wherever they intersect your x value must have made it true ¿Cierto? Must have made what true? This equals sign. See? And so, that being said, R has to be 8.19. See? Which I took it from there. So that is for part B. Oh, and for showing your work, you literally can set it up like this. I did it in the actual IB exam and it worked. See? I got full credit. You write everything out. You signal which one is Y1, which one is Y2. You announce that you do calc intersect. And bada bada boom, you get the answer. Eso. 
That is for number 10.